Hi everyone, this is Srinivas, Product Manager, Sampro. In today's session, we'll talk about sweet inference in Sampro. So let's look at the agenda. We'll start with an introduction to sweet inference, the basics on Sampro. We'll look at the configuration that is required for sweet inference, and then we'll end with some use cases and demonstration of this feature. So let's get started. Introduction to sweet inference. Before we start, let's understand what a suite is. A software suite is a group of related software that is offered as a unit. Now, organizations or publishers like Microsoft, VMware, Oracle offer suites, which is a group of softwares. Microsoft offers M365E3 as an example, which is a suite of Office, EMS, Windows Enterprise, Defender for Endpoint. It also offers server software suites like Core Infrastructure Suite, which is a combination of Windows Server and System Center software. Now, these software components can be purchased individually as well or as a suite, but organizations do purchase it because of the cost efficiencies that they get from suites. Now, these suite components can itself be a suite too. A good example here is M365E3, which has got Office 365E3, and Office is 365E3 is itself a suite for M365 apps for enterprise, Microsoft Teams, SharePoint Online, Yammer, etc. So these individual software components can also be a suite in their own right. Similar example is System Center, which is a combination of configuration manager, orchestrator, client management, and so on. Now, what is the advantages? Why do organizations buy software suites? First of all, cost savings. Software suites are sold at a lower price than individual software components. They offer integrated functionality. They provide comprehensive support. So publishers like Microsoft provide comprehensive support for the suite uh, as a whole product. They provide a consistent user interface and better scalability. And hence, suites are a preferred way for purchase of many, many uh, enterprise level softwares. Now, what is Suite Inference? Now, Suite Inference is a SAM Pro feature that helps determine if the software that is installed or subscribed is a part of a software suite so that it can be licensed effect efficiently. What it means is that if you have got a deployment of a particular component of software, for example, Windows Server, Using ServiceNow's suite inference, you could infer that install to be part of the core infrastructure suite so that it can be licensed under the core infrastructure suite uh, license or entitlement. So we'll understand this in more detail as we go along. But a small example here is you have got entitlements of core infrastructure suite standard. Now these entitlements, as you know, come with publisher part number. So when you enter it, uh, it would automatically create software models on ServiceNow. Now, the so software models on ServiceNow would have automated content services activated, which would automatically add the requisite suite components like Windows Server, System Center, uh, in this case. And then um, there is something known as uh, Suite Inference, which is uh, what we'll talk about, but they help determine the inference for these deployments. So we'll come to that. So imagine that there is a software deployment or install for Windows Server Standard. In this case, there is. So it will be inferred to the core infrastructure suite standard software model, which will then help it get licensed by the core infrastructure suite standard entitlement. So this is just a very basic overview of how Suite Inference works. As it's rightly said, the software deployment of Windows Server Standard was inferred to Core Infrastructure Suite Standard. And this will ensure that Windows Server Standard installs will be licensed with the CIS standard entitlements. So that's the basics of Suite Inference. Now, what are the challenges that SAM managers face? First of all, how to configure it? How to check whether it's working? And are there any real life examples that can help me understand? So we'll dive into all of them. The basics are that uh, if you have got a publisher part number, uh, it will automatically create a software model, 
and that software model will have a discovery map and this discovery map will help you automatically populate the suite components in this case you can see that there is a microsoft visual studio which is another uh, suite it has got you know a lot of components sql server windows server uh, and and many many more components so that you don't have to add it it comes automatically as part of content services in sam pro and then of course you know these uh, suite components have their own parents now as we know that uh, you know there could be a lot of different uh, suite parents for uh, the same software so that relationship is also managed by sam pro content services now how to check if suite inference was applied now a very easy way to check is that uh, you go into software installs list view and check the inferred suite and inferred suite product column and it will tell you that uh, you know this install was inferred to this suite software model and you can see that the inferred suite column will show you exactly where that inference has happened this will help you determine if inference has been uh, working correctly or not and uh, uh, one more thing to understand here is that uh, you know the inferred suite will help you determine which software model that install was inferred to but there's another column known as software model result and that will ultimately tell you where this was licensed on um, in this case uh, you know the the inferred suite and the software model result suite are the same but in many cases it may not be the case it could be that your inferred suite is inferred to a particular software model and then uh, the licensing happens on another software model because uh, inference uh, is just a way to efficiently infer to the right software model but then the licensing could happen in a more efficient software model and we'll come to more details about it so that's uh, a detail about inference and licensing now coming to configurations uh, these are some of the steps right so first of all set up your suite inference uh, so that it helps infer correctly you know you have to use the right ppn because the ppn would help you you know create the entitlement which would automatically create the software model with the right discovery map and discovery maps as we just saw auto populate the components use the right inference percentage or number uh, in some cases this is auto populated by content automatically and thereby select mandatory optional or part of mandatory group so these are some of the steps that would help you set up suite inference select the property you know there is this uh, very important property that uh, uh, is part of the feature which you, will help you to use of component licenses so what that means is that let's say you have got a, a license for a suite but also a license for an individual product for example you have got license for cis suite and a license for windows server product now uh, if there are windows server installs they would be inferred to cis but you would want that uh, let's say the cis licenses are exhausted then it moves to and consumes the windows server license so using this property will help you achieve that and we'll see that in a demonstration and then in some cases you require product install conditions uh, for example you know in case of uh, visual studio you would want to have product install conditions because you would want your installs uh, in your dev environment to be only inferred to visual studio so if you have got product install conditions configured that will help you achieve that so these are some of the steps so you can see here that you know we've listed these steps uh, you start with setup of uh, suite inference you see that uh, the suite components are auto populated you just have to then determine the inference uh, percent or number uh, in some cases this percent or number are auto filled but in some cases you have to just uh, you know uh, just add the number uh, inference number 
means that the minimum number of components present to be considered as sweet. Inference percentage means the minimum percentage of components present to be considered as sweet. So either ways, you know, you could use a number or a percent, whichever is uh, more convenient for you. And then determine if uh, the component is mandatory or optional to be considered as part of the suite. So if you do that, uh, your suite inference uh, setup is complete. Thereby, you can go to the properties. And then if you want to use your component licenses, just check the optimized compliance for Microsoft Suite with component licenses to yes. And then what will happen is, as I mentioned, when your suite licenses are exhausted, it will move to your component licenses and consume it. You can set up your product install conditions in case of products like uh, Visual Studio so that your licensing happens uh, only on the dev environment. And that's about it. Now we come to the use cases. Now, there are several use cases. We'll not go into all the use cases. We'll talk about some common ones. Now, these are the two common ones uh, which I've taken. One is for Microsoft Windows Server uh, uh, and CIS. So uh, in this case, uh, you know, you have got Windows Server standard installations and uh, you'd want those Windows Server standard installations to be uh, inferred and consumed by CIS entitlement. And in the second use case, you have got uh, Windows Server standard installs and then uh, you would have them inferred to CIS suites. But the difference here is that once that CIS suite entitlements are exhausted, then the installs uh, get consumed by the component license, in this case, Windows Server Standard. And we'll see a demonstration of that. Um, the first use case, you know, is uh, can be depicted like this, right? You have got software entitlements they auto create the software model. Now these software models, as we know, have got suite components, in this case, system center and Windows server standard. And what happens is that, you know, based on the installation that uh, comes through inventory and discovery, uh, the software installs are created, which create the discovery models. They're normalized and licensed. And this software install of Windows Server 2022 standard matches to one of the suite components of CIS standard. And that means that now it can be inferred. And so inference happens uh, of that software installs to CIS 2022 standard, and thereby the license is consumed by CIS standard. Now, if you want to understand this in more detail, uh, just look at these steps. You know, uh, whatever I mentioned has been documented here. The first and second step are the PPN and the software model creation. Three, four, five step is for your deployments, the installs, uh, which are getting uh, discovered, creation of installs, and then the discovery model creation. And thereby, the last step is inference, and then uh, the consumption. So that's how a usual uh, inference works. Now, if you take it this notch further, and we just talked about it, what happens if you have got a CIS entitlement and a Windows Server entitlement? You've got Windows Server installs, uh, and these get inferred to CIS, and then uh, the CIS entitlements get fully consumed or exhausted. Now, in this case, if you have got the system property true or set up, uh, those installs would then start getting uh, licensed by your uh, Windows Server entitlements once the CIS entitlements are totally exhausted. So we'll see a demonstration of that. But before that, uh, let's look at uh, the bigger picture, how it works. So the same case, uh, you have got two uh, entitlements. Now these entitlements auto create the software models, CIS and Windows Server 2022 standard. And then you have got deployments. Now these deployments come from installs uh, uh, to discovery models, which get normalized and licensable. And in this case, as we know, this Windows Server 2022 standard software model matches, to, uh, install matches to the uh, software model and thereby inference happens for the 2020 standard. Now what is different here is uh, that first of all, this Windows Server uh, uh, install starts consuming the license for CIS standard and then by 
when that is completely exhausted, moves over and starts consuming the Windows Server entitlement. And all these steps are listed here. So that was all said and done. Let's move to a demonstration. So I've got uh, my installs here. As I mentioned, you know, uh, we've got Windows Server installs. You can see here that, um, you know, we've got about 15 installs of Windows Server 2017 standard. And the inferred suite here is uh, CIS standard. And I can just uh, group by, and uh, you can see that, you know, a lot of inferences happen. Now, um, I can also see the software model result here. And I can see here that uh, there are two software model results. It basically means that the consumption has happened on two different entitlements. Now, if I go to the license workbench, I can um, go to Microsoft, go to Core Infrastructure Suite Standard, uh, look at the entitlements, and thereby uh, look at the software model for 2017 standard. I see the license metric result. I see that there are uh, 700 licenses and about everything was consumed. And because everything was consumed, the licensing started then consuming the Windows Server entitlements as you can see here. So there were 200 licenses of Windows Server, and you can see that uh, the license required is 112. So that means that the installs for Windows Server started consuming here as well. So they first moved to CIS. They consumed the CIS entitlements. You can see the installs here. Thereby, they moved and uh, started consuming the Windows Server entitlements. You can see the License required here and the installs here. So 43 plus 7, 50. So all those 50 installs that we just saw were consumed effectively by both CIS entitlements and Windows Server entitlements. So that was a short demonstration of how uh, suite inference works. Of course, you know, suite inference is a very complex topic and uh, it has got a lot of use cases. Some of these use cases are listed here. Uh, we do inference for SQL Server component services. Uh, so, you know, you, uh, if you have got SQL Server component services like integration service, uh, analysis service, they would be inferred to SQL Server enterprise or standard depending on the edition. Uh, if you have got SQL Server deployments on your development environment and you've set the product install conditions, they would be inferred to Visual Studio. And um, all, all of these are just examples of how those things work. Now, there are more complex use cases. Uh, what happens if you know there are multiple SQL Server component services on the same VM, um, or you have got SQL Server component services and database on the same same virtual machine? So in these cases as well, inference works. There is a particular logic, but uh, overall, uh, you know the uh, the solution remains uh, similar. Um, and you know we we can discuss this in the next session. Uh, you can see here that there are more use cases: inference of SQL Server component service installs, uh, Windows and System Center installs inferred to CIS, but there are not enough licenses. Then what happens? Um, what happens if there is Windows Server installs inferred to CIS standard, but there are not enough licenses for CIS standard? So, you know, in the same way, uh, those licenses will then start consuming CIS data center. Uh, what happens uh, in inference for M365 cases, subscription inference? So all the, are uh, these are, uh, you know, some more advanced topics that we'll cover in our next session. But for now, this session was just to provide an overview of suite inference, go through some of the uh, configuration topics Hope that was helpful. Thank you.